Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today, we're going to dispel one of those common misconceptions. Do the turrets fall out if the ship sinks? This is a misconception because if you watch the 1988 National Geographic documentary about the battleship Bismarck that we all grew up on, it talks about how there was no uh, clips to hold the turrets in place for, uh, because they never thought the ship was going to sink or something like that. I can't remember what exactly it said. Uh, and so when Bismarck rolls over after sinking in her final battle, her turrets fall out. Uh, and so Dr. Ballard finds Bismarck uh, sitting upright two miles down in the North Atlantic with just empty holes in the barbettes where the turrets had been. And it's not until the subsequent uh, James Cameron expedition that they actually find where uh, the turrets had landed. So people take that and then they assume that all battleships or uh, whatever, that would be the case. The reason the documentary brings it up, and the reason it's said in that way, the Germans decide not to do it because they never expect the ship to sink, or whatever the case is, uh, is because it was such an exception to what is normally done. So uh, here we are in the upper shell deck of turret two of Battleship New Jersey. And basically, all three upper shell decks are the same, so it's not like just turret two has this, all the turrets have it. Uh, but each turret on an Iowa-class battleship has seven of these clips. So if you look above here, you can see the planetary ring that the turret rotates on. This is all rotating part of the turret. It goes down that way, and then it comes down that central stalk over there and continues down for another several decks. However, this uh, is where the bearings are, where the turret is sitting, and this is where the turret is engaging to uh, rotate. So, this big casting here, which is, I don't know, something like 12 feet long, is one of seven clips each turret has around it, bolted on to uh, impact on this rail and keep it from falling out. It is extremely common for battleships to roll over when they sink. Often, they sink from asymmetric flooding. They take a series of torpedo hits or shell hits on one side, the side that's facing the enemy. So they start to turn to that side. Likewise, it's extremely common uh, for battleships to roll over because they're so much more top heavy than other ships. Because they have a tall superstructure to see as far as possible to spot the fall of shot of the main guns, they have a lot of top weight up here, especially during World War II when you see uh, ships transition from tripod-type masts or pole masts to fully built-out pagodas or towers uh, or Queen Anne's mansions, depending on what country you're looking at. Uh, and so that just adds more and more weight high up. And so as these things get asymmetric flooding and start to go over a little bit, the tower brings them over more, and so they roll over and sink. So very common uh, to find a battleship submerged upside down on the sea floor because she just rolls over and sinks that way. Uh, however, that is not why these clips are here. If the battleship rolls over and sinks, even if it's in a protected harbor like uh, Toronto when uh, Leonardo da Vinci sinks or I think it was Toronto, not one of the other Italian bases, or Pearl Harbor when Oklahoma sinks. Um, it's not likely that uh, you're going to recover the ship and return her to service. Both Leonardo da Vinci and Oklahoma are eventually raised, um, but neither one is returned to service because it's so cost prohibitive to fix them. Uh, and put them back out. Not only are they flooded, they were upside down, everything's all jumbled up, filled with oil, water, all sorts of other problems. Uh, notice in this picture of Oklahoma recovered, her turrets are still on there because it's common to do that, uh, to, to have the turrets tied down. The reason you tie the turrets down is so that if a shell impacts the armored barbette here, everything operates as intended, this armored barbette rejects the shell. The shell bounces off. But it's still 
imparting a tremendous force onto the turret, which would cause the turret to jump. And then the gears here that rotate it may no longer engage the planetary ring, and the turret will be jammed in train, training being turning left to right. So now you've got a otherwise fully functional floating battleship that has taken one hit uh, to a well-armored part of the ship that has stopped that hit, but it has still managed to knock out an entire gun turret. And by putting a stop like this, and look at that, it's, it's a fraction of an inch between the clip and the top, and it's extremely well lubricated uh, so that this can still rotate. You can see all that lubrication uh, leaking down here. Uh, so that if this takes a hit, the turret can't jump and land in the wrong place. So, could these actually keep the turret from falling out if the ship rolled over? Probably, but who cares at that point? The ship is already lost. Um, the turrets won't be usable again until years after the ship is returned upright and reactivated, assuming you can raise her at all. Um, but Bismarck is very much an exception in that her turrets fall out like that because they do not have a structure like this. What are some other battleship misconceptions you'd like us to address on the channel? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate the support you guys have given us. Um, there's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to support the museum and our channel. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum and our channel. Thank you for watching.